very occasionally record podcasts, which you can find at anchor.fm slash Grimm's Tales. What does forgiveness look like today? Is it even a thing, really, anymore? If you've been, quote, cancelled, unquote, if you've been savaged by the baying mob, how do you find your way back? See, being off my medications at the moment, it, it's wall-to-wall regretto vision every night in dreamland. And uh, a man's thoughts turn to mistakes, or, or lack thereof, throughout his life. There's also been a lot of talk in the news recently about how to de-escalate the Russia-Ukraine issue. And a lot of the talk there from the sort of diplomatic wing, the ambassadors and so on, is about creating off-ramps in that instance, a way for for Putin to, to bring the war to an end and back off while also being able to save face. Which made me think, how does anyone come back from accusations, however spurious, however nonsensical, these days? I don't know that you can. I mean, to take one example, Warren Ellis. Now, Warren didn't actually do anything wrong. He had several entirely consensual, largely online, ill-advised relationships uh, with, a, with a bunch of young alternative type women um, in the 90s and 2000s, and that was enough to get him cancelled, uh, to get his work scrubbed, to get thrown off projects, uh, and so forth. Now. What's happened to Warren, allegedly, has a, a way back from it. The uh, women that he wronged have a, a whole goddamn website up and uh, say that they're talking to him behind the scenes about restorative justice and so on, uh, which you might as well call reparations, keeping with the war theme there, I suppose. It, it basically seems to be a way to threaten and extort Warren, who helped the careers, actually, of a, of a lot of these women through his dalliances, to continue doing that, uh, but for, for nothing. And there's no guarantee at the end of this that even if they say collectively, you know, we're satisfied that he's made restitution and is not going to be a bad man anymore, there's no guarantee that anyone is going to touch him, tap him to work work on a project or anything anymore because that, that taint is around him even though he didn't actually do anything wrong. Ellis is essentially being held hostage by people who seemingly want to piggyback off his positive reputation and his body of work and have seen a way to do that. It all feels very cynical and even in his total capitulation, it doesn't seem to have made any real difference. To take another example outside of the more narrow field of comics, one can look at J.K. Rowling, once heralded as a, as a bastion of progressive ideas and a, a socialist success story. You know, someone who had been on benefits and then came out of it the other end to be a multi-millionaire. The experience of J.K. Rowling just goes to show that you, you differ on one thing, and that is it, and, and you're done. Uh, you're, you're guilty of nuance, and there is apparently no more egregious sin than nuance in the world at the moment. Rowling's sin, her feminism is centred on biology, it seems to be it, and no amount of expressed tolerance or or anything else seems to have made any difference to the accusations that she's a transphobe, etc. Um, I don't know the truth of that or not, 
she seems concerned with biological women's issues. She seems to have said a few things whose crudity can largely put at the, uh, whose blame can largely be put at the, at the door of Twitter, I suppose. But she has also directly expressed tolerance um, and acceptance of trans people, who are the main ones that she gets gets accused of, of attacking. So you have to have this kind of absolute one-for-one uh, moral purity, I, I suppose, to be accepted by one particular side of the culture war. And that would nominally <laughs> be the side that I would be on most of the time. Uh, yeah, if you follow the channel, you'll know I've been uh, accused of some pretty heinous shit in the past and even fairly recently. So assuming that I even wanted to be forgiven by these people who've shat on and abused me and done whole great big long videos essentially calling me a fascist and so on, what, what would that even look like? Would I have to say things that I know not to be true? Uh, would I have to cop to accusations that were made against me that I know not to be true and to promise to do better? But would I have to hand over my platform and my credibility to people who are already doing very n nicely, thank you, even better than me in a lot of cases, by exploiting outrage? And, and sometimes dubious oppression chic. Would I have to keep my mouth shut on, on whatever issues of the day might come up? Yeah, stay in your lane, white boy. <laughs> Write your role-playing games and don't say anything of any interest or worth ever again and never get in our way. That doesn't seem viable. It doesn't seem like forgiveness. Would I have to no longer associate with any of the people who treated me like an actual complex nuanced human being uh, during all these trials and tribulations despite differing from me politically people who've earned some friendship and leeway and, and consideration but are the wrong kind of people even though i disagree with them publicly and constantly <laughs> that's not good enough uh, associating with them even if it's to hash these things out and disagree over them yeah that's that's verboten would any of that make any difference you know you look at people like Ellis and you have to say no no it wouldn't you give the mob an inch and they take a mile but the other way around I can say exactly what it would take for me to forgive certain people uh, to take a recent example of a falling out with, with some people. I won't go into details because it's already inside baseball and, and gossip. Um, but all it would take would be an apology, uh, an acknowledgement that I make my decisions and my actions on principle um, and that even assholes are allowed a voice uh, and benefit of the doubt. Uh, an admission that the people I've had a falling out with took things too far and lashed out unnecessarily. That that would that would do it, you know. Sorry, Graham, we got this wrong. Uh, you're just following your conscience and your ideals. I understand that, and yeah, maybe we did take things a bit too far, and that that would be good enough for me. But I can't see any genuine apology in the other direction that would be accepted. Uh, I don't see that I have anything to apologise for in any case. Which is why I'm constantly trying to have conversations in the hopelessly naive thought that somehow uh, some mutual understanding at least could come out of these things. What I find so painful about all this is there's a self-sabotage of progressive and left-wing voices in doing this. The, uh, the left, 
not really the left, but we'll, we'll call it that for sake of ease because that's what most people understand. They're engaged in a purge, a constant purge, a state of permanent purge, while their opposite, who we can call the right, even though it's not really such an accurate placeholder necessarily anymore, they're not engaged in a purge. They're engaged in recruitment. And a lot of the time, on a lot of subjects, if not all, showing, weirdly, a much greater amount of tolerance for differences of opinion, particularly around politics, and a willingness to discuss, to have the argument. The straw man of this phenomenon is, oh, well, you called me a Nazi, so I became one to spite you. But the reality is that if star-bellied snitches are shunning you like Scientologists or Jehovah's Witnesses, and the snitches without stars on their bellies are at least acting more accepting and tolerant of you and having the conversations that you're trying to have, that you want to have, even if you disagree, you're just going to end up hanging out with and being exposed to people on the other side of these arguments. And you're going to end up feeling more positive about those bare-bellied snitches just through simple social exposure, friendship and the, and the bonds that form from their acceptance of you even if you disagree. That's something that the left should be doing, but they're too fixated on purging anyone for even the, the slightest political or social deviance, ironically. I'm never going to apologise if I don't believe I've done anything wrong, so the whole thought experiment is a non-starter. I, I know my own mind and my own motivations and the content behind what I say or do, and your taking offence at that doesn't mean that that offence was intended. You willfully reading nonsense into things that I say or do doesn't mean it was written or intended that way. And if I were to apologise for that, I'm sorry if you were upset, rings hollow. It's a phrase that's almost guaranteed to make whatever argument is going on much worse because it's not a sincere apology. Because you're not actually sorry. And why should you be? I can see that way that I can forgive people if they're willing to mend fences with me. I can't see a way the other way around. And that's a huge part of the problem. <clears throat> a part of the problem, I think. And nobody is willing to give you an off-ramp. They just want total capitulation without protest. And that's still not going to reverse any of the damage that they've done. And they're never going to apologise for what they've done, even though it's often deeply unjust. So it ain't ever going to happen. Zang. Imagination is a deeply personal game about depression and its effects, intended to help people with invisible illnesses to broach the subject and explore it in a way in which they can have power over it. Imagination is set after the fall of mainland Britain to a strange reality breakdown. The barriers between imagination and reality, dreams and nightmares, have shattered and strange things dreamed up by people caught in the event team across the land. Only those whose minds are already broken can hope to cope with exploring, understanding and combating this strangeness for the sake of the huddled refugees that sit and wait and watch from the smaller islands around the coast. A game of mental illness and art using the description system as used in Neverwhere. This game is available free so please promote, download, host and spread as far and wide as you can. Available at post-mort.com and drive through RPG.